Coach Folk, tell me a little bit about life before diagnosis. Um, life before was great. I was working with the under-17 national team, and um, I was traveling the world. Uh, I represented four um, United States and four youth world championships, um, and I was fantastic. And pretty much, I think it was 2003, I started 2004, May 20th. That's when I was diagnosed, um, and I had a, uh, a little lesion on my neck, and then the lesion went to um, kind of a golf ball, or actually before the golf ball, a gum ball, and then the gum ball went to the golf ball, and that's when my wife said, there's something going on here, and you know, being a nightmare male, stubborn, I was like, there's nothing wrong, it's my allergies and everything, so I went to an ear, nose, and throat specialist, and on uh, May 20th, I was diagnosed with squamous cell carcinoma, which is a type of cancer that is affected through three main ways, excessive drinking, excessive smoking, or sun exposure. I really don't smoke. Um, I don't drink. I occasionally drink a glass of wine, but I, it's not like I'm pounding beers at night, you know, and so I assumed that it was because I was in the sun coaching for the last 20 years. What were you feeling at the moment of diagnosis? The moment of diagnosis was probably the, uh, the scariest uh, point in a person's life. I think, and the way they did it was terrible. They called me over the phone and told me to get my wife on the other line. They didn't even tell me to come to the office. And uh, so I was really, right away it scared me and the first thing they said was you have, you know, a type of cancer, we would suggest you go here, here, and here. And, and like the initial reaction was, am I going to live this weekend? You know what I mean? I mean, you hear all these horror stories, so right away I was like, take the dagger out, you know? And, and they didn't really give you a clear... Um, answer or statement. The one thing I was blessed that I had very good friends who I called right away and he called uh, Moffitt Cancer Center um, close to here which is ironic because you know what I mean every day I drive by that place and thank the Lord um, and they were very aggressive and Monday you know they kind of calmed me down on Thursday and Friday I kind of got my you know bearings a little bit and I think the first initial reaction is that you're in denial um, and and then the doctors at Moffitt and the nurses were fantastic and they said you're gonna live you know everything and then Monday I went in I had a uh, a doctor's appointment with a surgeon and the real thing I really enjoyed was it was a team of doctors so it was an uh, anesthesiologist it was a chemo doctor a radiation doctor uh, a surgeon um, the nurses I mean, and it was so professionally done, and so it was, it was kind of like a weight came off my back, um, but the initial, yeah, the initial Thursday, I mean, May 20th, I know it. Do you know what I mean? I, I think, I, you know what I mean? I, I, I remember it uh, vividly, and it was just a shock. What was life like during treatment? Like, what were your thoughts? My thoughts were... Uh, scary. Your thoughts when you're going through cancer are you're pretty much not thinking. You're just going day to day. And what I had is five days a week, um, 45 minutes a day. I had radiation where I was in a actually like a, a honeycomb mask um, that was really tight to my face. Um, and then they strapped you in, kind of uh, harnessed your arms. And so, yeah, obviously it's, it's radiation, so you, they didn't, they targeted the area and they didn't want to, you know, hurt any of the other areas. So it was very, very uh, uh, confiding. Um, it was, for me, the first time was uh, very stressful. Um, I went to a, a, a mental conditioning person afterwards to take pills to relax. Obviously you see that I'm, I'm high strung. Um, so it was really hard for me, but mentally, I realized that I had to, to get over this, um, and it was three, four bouts of uh, chemo, um, which that was really, really hard, 
as well. I mean, I've had nine knee surgeries, and I thought that that was the hardest thing. And this, that, the knee surgery is like hiccups compared to what cancer um, puts you through. Uh, the first two or three weeks, I was good. It would be like one day I would be like normal. So I would go and work out and that'd be a normal day. And then the, once it got like to the three and a half, four weeks, man, it was very difficult. My father and brother came down from Pennsylvania, so it was a seven-week treatment. And some of my friends came the first weeks, other people came the second week, other people came the third week. Um, and my parents, my dad, um, came the fourth week. And it just happened to be that that was the worst week. And my dad and brother witnessed everything. I had a, uh, a feeding tube in my uh, chest right here, right below. They, they put a hole and a tube came out and I had to force feed myself to eat. Um, before the fourth week, they pretty much told me I was, right now I weigh maybe 175, 80 pounds, probably more 80, 185, 180, yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, but at the time, uh, I was 135 pounds. And they said to me, you better eat or you're going to die. And like that was the like the red light. I think that's when I realized I got to start fighting. But about the fourth week when my parents came, uh, that, that was really, not my parents, sorry, my brother and father. Um, that was the hardest week. I was throwing up. I actually ripped my esophagus. So I had to go in um, to the emergency room. Um, and they, you know, they, they kind of backed off on all my treatments. Um, but my dad, it was really hard. I've saw, I've never seen my father cry, and I pretty much saw him cry on a daily basis. I had uh, friends of mine that came in, and my face was like um, pasty yellow. Um, you know what I mean? And I was, like I said, I was skinny and you know drawn in. And, and not healthy looking, and I, I saw that was probably the hardest, hardest week. After that week, after they left, um, I, I kind of rebounded a little bit, and I, my wife, uh, in cancer, your like uh, partner is probably more important than you, because she was the one that was like, you're not gonna, you're not gonna die, you're not gonna, you know, you, keep, you gotta keep fighting. And I think uh, once that fourth week, left then I kind of got my second win so called and um, I started really fighting a lot harder um, and but that fourth week was and then the amazing thing with the doctors was they pretty much said after six months you're gonna feel like this after 12 months you're gonna feel like that and I was like yeah you're, you're who are you you know you know being again a stubborn male um, and I, I um, they were pretty much spot on. My throat, I mean, when I first started coaching, I had to use a megaphone. Um, I, I cover my face. I'm, now it's a lot better, you know. I mean, it's, you know, seven, eight years out, you know, and so um, it's a lot better. So at this time when you're going through all this and your family's here, do you have any hopes for the future? Like, what are, what are you thinking at this point? I'm thinking about my daughter, to tell you the truth, because mm -hmm. my daughter was born... In 2001, we adopted her, and we won the national championship. And really, the national championship didn't mean anything to me when we had my daughter. So I'm thinking we sent her to Italy with my in-laws to be away from us because we knew the seven weeks was going to be hell. Um, and so I'm thinking about her the whole time. I'm thinking I want to, you know, I want to, my motivation was to grow old with her and now she's you know now she's nine years old gonna be ten I mean I went to her first soccer game so it's like it's uh, it's all worth it but I definitely was thinking about my daughter and my wife my wife too yeah I gotta say my wife too so tell me so. about remission and life after how is it now I mean I think the toughest thing was that they told me in in three years you're gonna do this and I was so excited I think a year a year later, I went on my first trip with the national team, and it was to Guatemala. And on every trip of the national team, they take a, a doctor, okay? 
and I was so excited. I was like a little kid, and it's just weird because I keep telling my players every day, especially here at St. Leo, that you enjoy this and have fun. And I vividly remember that I was so happy. It was like the best day of my life once again and I was playing and running but like a nightmare I didn't listen to the doctors and I went berserk and I thank God there was a doctor and uh, I got really sick for the next three four days I had an IV in me I went to a hospital in Guatemala um, and I kinda went I, I went to nuts um, and then that's when I was very fortunate because that's when I started really paying attention and, and listening to all the small details and then I kind of um, progressed and they told me that I would feel good, feel normal, all right? I felt good right after the, the radiation and chemo stopped, but feel normal um, probably five to six years and realistically they were spot on because there would be days where I would just shut it down. Like I would be here and the next thing you know I'd talk to you and you'd leave and I'd fall asleep and I'd sleep for like eight hours. And that's what the doctor said. Like if your body tells you, shut it down, shut it down. So, you know, I, I was very fortunate to be working with U.S. Soccer who was fantastic and supported me through everything. And I would, you know, at days, some days I would sh not show up, you know, and they just, they did without me, and, and it was fantastic. Other times, instead of traveling with the team, I remained at home, um, and so it was, it was trying time. My remission, it's fantastic. I mean, I'm, I'm motivated. I'm, I'm very much support. I support the Live Strong with, with uh, Lance Armstrong, because uh, we were with Nike um, when I was with U.S. Soccer. I really got involved with that. I mean, I'm gonna. We're gonna walk. Uh, go to the breast cancer thing on the 30th. Um, I, I would like to do more. I actually went. <clears throat> two or three of my friends have been diagnosed with cancer, so I went to Moffitt um, just the other day. And it's it's hard. It's hard going there when you you have endured so much pain. You know, all, all the 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 negative things and you know the pessimistic things um, come back into your head. But it's also the more you talk about it, I think, I think it's more kind of soothing and rewarding and it's more therapy, I guess. So anytime I have a chance, I've talked to <clears throat> two or three kids in Pennsylvania um, that are from my, around my high school and stuff that have diagnosed cancer when they were 15, one kid, and when he was 17, and I try to help them um, if they have questions or concerns. I, I should be doing a lot more, I think. But I think it's just made me more, I don't know, complete or whole. Where a lot of times I get upset uh, maybe at the balls not being pumped up or the pennies aren't washed. And at the end of the day, it's not really that important. How does this transfer to like the day-to-day -day life with your players? I think it's for now, this team right now, I mean, I keep, I've been speaking about the last since October have come around about fighting and I just I think they hear it but I don't really throw it. I, I, a couple times I say to cancer I, tr I was going to tell a story um, but I, I think it's, it, it, it's about every day fighting and, and you know you got to get through stuff and whatever you need to do you, you think it's uh, you know I, I'm tired today oh my gosh I have a test tomorrow and it's really not that important what's important is, is what you do about it and, and you're going to get slammed in your face but are you going to get up you know and I think I think so I'm trying to instill this work ethic into the players where I think I don't know if we're actually used to it it takes time you know but I think um, the, the sooner that they get that that they realize that it's a fight and, and it, you know soccer is a hard sport I mean you're in sports you know I mean it's not you, you shouldn't be comfortable when you're training it should be an, an, an uncomfortable environment and then for sure for me it was uncomfortable. It was it was the hardest thing that I've ever you know ever endured, you know, without a doubt. And I think um, I, I know at one point I wanted to quit, and I've never quit in my life. And I think so. I, I pr probably try to instill it in our players every day. You know, I try to you know never give up. You know, Jimmy Valvano, 
never give up and keep fighting. I try to tell it, instill it to them every day. Okay. Well, thank you very much. That's all we have. No thank problem. you so no much. Problem. Thank you. Thanks.